Is this thing on? Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. I'm Mick, your host with the most just ask your girlfriends and your wives. And welcome to today's edition of the Movies TV Mad Daily. Let's talk DCU canon. Now at the Creature Commandos and White and New York Comic Con convention, James Gunn brought up how they would deal with DCEU canon to DCU canon. In other words, how do we know what's going to be canon in the DCU from the DCEU? And James Gunn simply said, if we mention something, it's canon, and if we don't, it's not. Now, a certain section of the DC fan base got very angry about this. Now, I understand where the anger's coming from, but I don't think James Gunn's doing anything wrong here. How else? you expect him to explain to you within a film or a TV show what's canon from the DCEU and what's not. This is a very simple way of doing it. But we all know what's going to be canon really and what's not. We know the Snyder stuff isn't going to be canon in the DCU. We know they've already got a brand new Superman. So Cavill's Superman isn't going to be canon. I mean, it would be crazy if he tries to say that the current sweat Superman is the Cavill Superman and everything that happened to him happened to That would be ridiculous and I don't think that's happening. But it's a really simple concept that people shouldn't be confused about. And I've seen so many different takes and people making it up as they go along. So basically what's happened is Zack Snyder fans, now I'm a, I'm a fan of the Snyderverse, of DC as you know, but I'm not a cultist. And I'm also not a James Gunn simp, but I like his I like his comic book movies. Now you all understand that, but I'm very strong on objectivity. I am not a shill, I am not a simp, neither for Snyder or for Gunn. But in this instance, I don't think Gunn's done anything wrong if they mention a piece of DCEU canon, it becomes DCEU canon. It's simple, it's easy, it's easy to understand, it's not confusing. Because for the people complaining, what else do you want the man to do? How else do you want the man to do it? But, saying all of that, I explained my stance on this from a very long time ago. And I stand by that stance. I said from the beginning, not having a full reboot for DC Universe was a big mistake. It should have been a full reset. But because James Gunn wants to bring his Peacemaker Universe over to DCU, his Suicide Squad Universe over to DCU, and make it all canon to the DCU, because Peacemaker and the Suicide Squad are DCU, so something from that stuff will be canon, and some of it won't be. But I think most of it will be, by the way, so it'll be interesting what's canon and what's not within, from DCEU to DCU. But I think, for example, something that's not anything to do with James Gunn creatively is Blue Beetle. And Zolo, is it how you pronounce his name? Who played Blue Beetle in that movie is canon to the DCU. In fact, Blue Beetle is getting an animated series, which will be DCU canon, will be for the DCU. I'm not so sure that much is canon from the Blue Beetle movie, by the way. He did explain when that movie was announced that actually the film wasn't DCU, but the actor playing Blue Beetle would be part of the DCU. So I expect Zolo to be getting lots of cameos and appearances in other people's movies. I don't expect another Blue Beetle movie. I don't think, well, the first movie proved there's not an appetite at this moment in time for a Blue Beetle movie, but I think it's important that Blue Beetle features in other movies and is part of the new DCU because he's a really important character for many, many DC fans. And I think the actor did a great job. It wasn't a great movie. The usual current day aesthetics and commentary was there. I think that's something James Gunn won't be getting involved with, by the way. So Blue Beetle, something creatively that has nothing to do with James Gunn, is DCU canon, to a point. All the actors are DCU canon, 
at the very least. I will look forward to watching that animated series if we ever see it. So I think in terms of Gunn's explanation of what's going to be DCU canon from the DCEU and, what, and what's not going to be canon from the DCEU to DCU is a simple explanation. And again, I don't know what people are upset about, but I do, I do. It's Snyder fans who, ups, who are upset that that universe is not going to continue and they know that Gunn's going to delete all of that from the DCU. It's not going to exist. But certain Snyder fans have made a great point about this as well in the past. The fact being that it's better. It gives the Snyderverse more of a chance of being its own thing in DC Elseworlds. I'm not saying that's a possibility. And by the way, when you look at the, you know, the Snyderverse toys and characters, they've become McFarlane toys now. Selling like hotcakes, doing really, really well. And they're selling better than things like Peacemaker figures would, if there's even Peacemaker figures. But you understand, Snyder's stuff is very, very popular. People can go back to the box office and say, Man of Steel, 700 million, blah, blah, blah. You know, BVS not even making a billion. But the box office is... The box office numbers for BVS and MOS are solid at the very least. And there is a hardcore audience to see more Snyderverse. There's no question about that. And I love the Snyderverse. I rewatch Snyder's DC movies all the time. I don't have an issue with them. But I do have an issue with people who have an issue with this canon thing. You all knew what was coming. You all knew we were moving away from the Snyderverse. You all knew, most probably, that the only DCEU canon that will be DCU canon will be mostly from James Gunn's stuff. And by the way, that's understandable. It's his stuff. Why, you know, I saw Aaron Fesher's video, very angry about the canon situation, and saying, it's all about James Gunn. He is the creative CEO at DC Studios. What the frick? Did you expect, Aaron? What did you expect? Did you expect him to make another director stuff canon when it's been divisive? WB are on a hanging by a thread financially. They need a universe that unites people, not divides people. And as much as I love the Snyderverse, it was divisive. And not even its top defenders, you know, its ardent defenders, can argue with that. This studio needs a win. Creature Commandos needs to be a win. Not a huge win because it's not a big IP, but Superman needs to be a huge win. When that trailer's released in December, and fingers crossed we see it in December, hopefully, that it breaks viewing records on you know social media and all of that, and people are excited. Because it's, in terms of hype, for DC Universe, if I'm honest, I don't see it. DC fans, I think, are interested, not all of them, I think if you're a Snyderverse stan, you're probably against DC Universe. I have spoken to Snyder stans, or fans at the very least, not stans, because they're hardcore, that are going to give DC Universe a chance, and that's very good of them, and I, I like that. Um, I think, in life, we should give new food a chance, that we should taste something and then judge it, not be reactive over things. And, and, and that's where I'm coming from. But when I say, when I see all these, all these DC accounts that popped out overnight, I'm suspicious. I know the studios behind those accounts. When I see all these fans, all these James Gunn shields on threads, I know they're studio bots. It's so freaking obvious because you know, I've never known such simps in my life. Oh, I trust James Gunn. I know he's going to make it great. You don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't know if the DCU is going to be good, bad, mid or indifferent. And neither do you. But I can judge it as I consume it. And I can be fair to James as I consume it. James Gunn knows who I am on social media. Because I've been commenting on his stuff for ages. He knows I do videos. And he knows that sometimes he does and says things that I'm not happy about, and I constructively criticise him. 
He also knows if he does something that I like, I'm going to come on here and praise him. Like the wholesome image of Crypto and Superman. It uplifted me, it got me excited for the DCU, it got me excited for Superman, and I said so, right? You know, I'm objective. And the problem is with a lot of fans on social media, they lack objectivity, and I keep on talking about it. But no matter how much heat it gives me, no matter how many unsubs and unfollows I get, I'm going to be objective. For example, you know how I feel about Superman and Lois being cancelled. It's one of the best, best live action, you know, versions of a comic book character ever. And it was supposed to go for seven seasons. And James Gunn and Peter Saffron didn't want any competing Superman properties, so they got it cancelled. And even worse, Bitsy Tulock was kind of simping for them and trying to say it had nothing to do with them. And actors are always the last people to fucking know anyway. So... I, I quote tweeted her and I quote threaded her all the time because she's full of BS. She's an okay actor. She's an okay Lois. She's not one of my favourite Loises, but I think she's doing a good job as Lois. But I don't think she's up there with Margot Kidder, who's my favourite, and Erica Durant from Smallville, who played Lois, my joint favourite Lois Lane with Margot, and Amy Adams, who's a great Lois Lane, Terry Hatcher, which is a lot of people's favourite Lois Lanes as well. I don't think Bitsy Too Lock is there. But a lot of people do. It's all about opinions at the end of the day. But that's neither here nor there. I don't like the way she was simping for Gun and Saffron. They did get it cancelled. It was wrong. And I said so. I saw the crypto image. I liked it. So I said so. You know, I did an exclusive video how I think the Batman movie will be recycled. How Andre, not Andre, Andres Machete was never going to direct that movie. And they only announced him as the director to try and get more tickets sold for The Flash at the time. James Gunn doesn't even talk about Brave and the Bold. He has said there's around three projects he's looking to say more about. Now, it's going to be very, very interesting if I'm proved right or wrong about Brave and the Bold, you know, being cancelled. If I'm wrong, I will hold my hands up. It's cold. But the information I got from my source is that that movie is not going to happen, that they're going to embrace Matt Reeves' universe he's a batman crime saga and i think hollywood is a very reactive place and as i say wb are hanging on by a thread and when you look at the numbers of the penguin you know you can't argue with those numbers when you look at the box office of the batman 750 million or whatever it was huge box office people like aaron fesher are saying oh no well the batman box office was bad no it wasn't it was during covid it did well it's like when he says, oh, so is, you know, James Gunn's A Suicide Squad was a flop. It was a flop because it was day and day and there was a huge, you know, surge of COVID at that time. That's what I'm talking about. This is what this platform is. It's fair. It's fair. I'm not simping James Gunn. I'm being honest. Do you really believe that movie it was a good movie at the very least? I don't think The Suicide Squad was a bad movie. It was a really good, great CBM. I enjoyed it. I remember sitting in the cinema on my own. Because it was during COVID. I was sitting there with a mask in the fucking Odeon on my own. And it was an amazing experience and I enjoyed the movie. And I said so in my review. You can't say it's a bad movie. I don't think it's one of the best DCEU movies. It's not top, top tier DCEU, but I love it. And I enjoy it. You know, the Snyder DCEU films rank higher to me than James Gunn's A Suicide Squad. I am honest. I am honest. And I react to every moment fairly. So if you want to see someone who speaks honestly and openly about what they think without being toxic and hateful, this is the place to be. If you want to follow someone who speaks the truth, who told you that... The, you know, the viewing figures for Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max, as it was called at the time, were some of the, you know, highest viewing figures for, you know, for a streaming, you know, for, for streaming from Netflix or Amazon or anything. I spoke the truth. I saw the figures. That's how connected I am. But you're going to say, look at your subs. Look at your views. How can you be connected? Because you mustn't judge people on how successful or unsuccessful they are. Campier and Randolph talk absolute shit. Grace Randolph said that Wonder Woman 84 was going to be a Flashpoint type of movie. She was proved as a liar. Campier says a bunch of shit. 
And, you know, Camping and Randolph used to work in the fucking industry, had connections and probably still have connections in the industry. And I get more stuff right than them. Look back at my videos. Look at the stuff that I tell you is going to happen. I was the only one who stood up and said the four DCEU movies that were cancelled wasn't because of VFX. That was the bullshit they were putting out. That wasn't the fucking reason. Because they wanted to rejig them. That's what it was. Did it work? They probably would have made more money off those movies if they kept them going in the year they were supposed to come out. That was their mistake. And I said all of this at the time. In a worse camera than I have now. Do you remember that shitty grainy camera I had? Which was built into the laptop I'm actually using now. But I said it. It doesn't matter about subs or followers. It doesn't matter if people know where I am. But for the people who watch my videos every day and appreciate me, who I appreciate back, you know me. You know I'm honest. You know I'm genuine. You know I call a spade a spade. And you know that I've got more things right than wrong. What does that say about me? That I barely get 30 to 50 viewers on these videos a day. But I still do them because it makes me feel good. I enjoy connecting with other fans. It's not about money, it's not about hits, it's not about clicks. Whoever likes my videos likes them, whoever doesn't like them, what do I average? Four to seven likes a video. It's pathetic, but it doesn't matter because I get to say my piece. So just because I don't get the views, just because I don't get the follows, it doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been more right than wrong. I told you that the people who employed James Gunn are the people who implemented Justice League, who were anti Zack Snyder. We know that. We know that Toby Emmerich is still behind the scenes, right? We know that he was given a production deal by Zaslav when he removed him, because it was very difficult to remove Emmerich, but he didn't really go anywhere. He's still there. We, we know who's placed James Gunn where he is. They want a colourful, bright, unproblematic universe and it remains to be seen if James Gunn can deliver that. He did look nervous at the Creature Commandos and you know NYC convention. He did look very very nervous uh, and I was watching Aaron Fisher's video and he did notice that that he was a, and I did notice it as well because they're desperate. This has to succeed. This is the end of Warner Brothers. If the DCU doesn't succeed, if Superman doesn't succeed, they can't you know as I said before, it's going to be interesting because Lanterns is happening. You know, Paradise Lost is happening. Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is happening. How? If Superman doesn't succeed. Superman has to deliver. And that trailer is going to be very important for the general audience. Because right now, the only people talking about DCU Superman Creature Commandos are DC fans and the WB plants online. And I, I don't need to tell you which ones are plants. Go on Fred's and see those fake fans. Go, you know, see all these huge, you know, all of a sudden these huge DC accounts that have popped up and getting lots of, you know, follows and stuff. You know, it's all there to be seen. You don't need me to tell you that. You, you know it's suspicious that all these DC accounts suddenly turned up, that James Gunn connects with them and talks to them. You know, that there's no surprise here. They're desperate and they will do anything. And this reminds me of the fake hype we had for the Flash movie, which was a flop, by the way, which James Gunn said he was one of the best films in the junior. He was lying. Again, I called him out. Not because I hate James Gunn, not because I've got an agenda against James Gunn. I called him out because he said something that wasn't true. He went on the Inside of You podcast with Michael Rosenbaum, that happens to be a friend of his. I love Michael Rosenbaum, the best Lex Luthor, a great guy, and always sticks his middle finger up to the industry, which I respect as well. But he went on that podcast and he uttered BS. So, you know, to me, James Gunn, many times, is an unreliable narrator. You know, just like he said, there wasn't going to be a trailer uh, this year for Superman, suddenly there could be a trailer for Superman. He said it's coming soon, but not so soon. Whatever that, again, what does that actually mean, James? Again, I think that's a mistake. If it were me, I would, I would be telling people a date, getting people excited, saying this is the date, the first teaser trailer for Superman's coming out, be ready, you are not ready. Yeah? 
you know, going up there and saying, oh, you, you know, you're not going to believe how fucking amazing David Cronsweet is. You know, well, of course you're going to say David was amazing. You cast him. It's your movie. You know, of course you're going to say everything's going well with my movies and my TV shows for DCU. Of course you're going to say that. You know, anyone would say that. You know, it's not really, it's not really rocket science at the end of the day, you know, for you to say that. But ultimately, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and we're going to have to wait and see. And I think the trailer for Superman will tell us a lot. He's hidden this story. He's hidden what this Superman movie is going to be. And it's going to be very, very interesting if he's hiding it because it's controversial, or it's hiding it because he doesn't want to spoil the movie. That will be interesting as well. But this trailer will be the first clue. And he'll still hide a lot of things in this trailer quite right too by the way but because we don't want spoilers do we but yeah but in terms of this canon situation i don't know why people are getting you know their noses bent out of shape over it because how else is he going to do it but again as i said earlier he could have avoided this situation by having a full reboot which is what he should have done i always said that i always said it was never a good idea to do a partial reboot. But he, he had his own reasons for that. He's making his job harder. He's getting accusations of, well, it's all about him. It's all about his stuff. That's why he didn't do a full reboot. Yes, yes, it's true. He likes his Suicide Squad movie. He wants to use certain elements of that. Peacemaker was also a great show, by the way. So he wants to use certain elements he wanted to do a sequel series for peacemaker which apparently is going to be very magical and fantastical because gun is going very fantastical for dc universe and actually i quite like the fact that he's going fantastical i like that idea because as much as i love grounded stuff i'm also and i've said this so many times as well verging on being boring but i'm bored of grounded comic book television and movies. I want to see some fantastical stuff, and that's what James Gunn's going to give us, because that's something that cinema and television lacks today. Escapism. You know, wish fulfillment, and I think that's what James Gunn's trying to bring, and I think that's what his first Guardian has brought. Wish fulfillment. A group of people that could be me and you, meeting up, and being heroes. Those people. Star-Lord could be anyone. You know, Gamora can be anyone could be us, and that's what James Gunn does. And that's what you want from movies. You want to go there and imagine those people, you know, in those films are you. And all of a sudden, the world is looking up to us because we've become heroes. Everyone knows who we are. We all want that. We all want that notoriety. That's why everyone's trying to get attention on the internet. That's why everyone's screaming on the internet, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's what we fucking do, isn't it? Because we're so fucking vain and obsessed. We're attention seekers. I'm an attention seeker. You're an attention seeker. It's okay. It's part of human nature. So that element of what James Gunn's attempting to do, being fantastical, is great. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I think the, the re this is the problem with bringing Matt Reeves, the Batman universe, into the DCU. Because his stuff is grounded. But Gunn's DCU will mostly be fantastical. Even if Batman Brave and the Bold does happen, and I'm wrong about that being cancelled, you know, that's a fantastical Batman universe. There'll be more magic in that as well. So it's very difficult to bring... Matt Reeves wants to be grounded. Look how he changed the name from Oswald Cobblepot to Oz Cobb. That's how obsessed. But the other day, I think they called him Oswald in, last, in the episode five. So I think they've kind of... I very rarely, I don't really, have they ever called him Oz Cop in that series? I can't remember now. I think even while they were making the show, they probably thought, fuck, this is so bad. This, even they probably thought it was shit as they were making it. It's a stupid idea. And I think it's just Matt Reeves' paranoia about being grounded. I don't think Oswald, I said this the other day, Oswald Copperpot isn't a fantastical name. It's just a name. Oswald is an old fashioned name. Cobblepot is like, when you think of, when you think of the penguin's nose and face, he looks like a Cobblepot. Not that I know people who are called Cobblepot, but you know what I mean? Names can be cleverly appointed to characters. And I think when you think of Oswald Cobblepot and you look at the guy, I mean, without me being mean, 
Oswald Cobblepot is fucking hideous. He's ugly. He's got a limp, you know. You know, he's the kind of person you look at and you kind of look away from when he's walking down the street. You know, you want to avoid them. I know it's not a very nice thing to say, but it's true. So when you think of the name Cobblepot, and again, this is not a nice thing to say, but you would imagine an ugly, unattractive person would be called Cobblepot. So the Oz Cobb thing was ridiculous, but this is how obsessed Reeves is with being grounded. So if he was kind of, if his Batman crime saga was brought into the DCU, which is a fantastical universe, then his Batman would be grounded in a fantastical universe. What it means is to, and I think that's the only, I, I think, there is a way for Matt to say yes to his Batman crime saga being part of DCU and it's if he has creative control. Yes, we're part of DCU now, right? We can have the odd crossover, depending how grounded the characters in your DCU are. We're not just going to let anyone in there. He even said he would maybe think about a Superman or Clark Kent cameo in his the Batman universe as long as, you know, it was a grounded situation. In a way, you can have a crossover you know, it's having Clark and Bruce meet for the first time, just having conversation, and Clark not using his powers. It could be done, and you never know. I mean, I'd be very interested to see Matt Reeves' take on Superman. I said when I saw the Batman, I wish that Matt could make a Superman film, because you can make a grounded Superman film. I mean, Smallville, in the early days of Smallville, was a very grounded pre-Superman story, so it can be done. So I think there is a way of Matt saying, yes, OK, I'll join the DCU, but I'm absolutely going to have creative control over my segment of it. So I think don't be surprised if it happens. Now, Gunn the other day said that the Batman universe, the crime saga, is part of DC Studios, but not part of the DCU, which is accurate. At this moment in time, would James like that Batman to be part of you know, DCU, you do need a Batman in there. This is the complex situation. And it's not James's fault because he inherited Matt Reeves the Batman, which is not a bad thing when you look at the Batman movie, when you look at how great Penguin is, mostly apart from the simping for Sophia, which is fucking getting on my nerves. Kristen Malotti is great, that character's great. IGN saying that you don't even need Oswald Cobblepot because Sophia is so fucking good. IGN, have you ever had a good fucking take in your fucking lives? I watch that show because it's called The Penguin and it's about The Penguin. And even if Christina wasn't in that show, even if Sophia wasn't in that show, I wouldn't personally fucking miss it. I think she's great. I think she's going to become a great crime saga, Matt Reeves, the Batman crime saga villain and character. Who knows if they're going to kill her off by the end. But stop simping this woman. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I think there is a roadmap to Matt Reeves, the Batman crime saga, joining the DCU. Because I think there are discussions of how you do this. I think if there is no Batman in the DCU, he will be mentioned, but you'll never see him. Now, that would be an interesting way of, of doing it, but I think fans will be pissed off. You can understand why. I wouldn't be overly happy about this. So it's a very, very difficult situation. But there's a reason why we're getting a Superman movie. But, you know, the Brave and the Bold, the Batman movie, hasn't been mentioned. He doesn't talk about it, boys and girls. Why doesn't he talk about it? And that's the thing. And sooner rather than later, because I'll go back to what he said the other week, that things, yeah, the things that we've announced that are in development, but it doesn't mean you'll ever see them, right? So we shouldn't know about them. Brave and the Bold shouldn't have been announced because there's a difference between developing things behind closed doors where you know it's in development, whether it's a TV series or a film, but it might not happen. It's less pressure for you, the creative, if the public don't know about it. He keeps on going on about leaks, just denying leaks. Everybody else does. But this is where he's gone wrong. You only had to announce Superman, Peacemaker 2, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow and Lanterns. And Paradise Lost. That's all you had to announce in Creature Commandos, which we'll be seeing in a couple of months. There was no need to announce everything else. What it does, it puts you under pressure. He's putting himself under pressure when he doesn't have to. But we'll see what happens with this whole Batman situation. 
But the whole idea of this video, and I did cover it, of course, but I covered a lot of things, um, because it is a, you know, it is a DC video at the end of the day. And you want to know my views on these things, or you want to be here. But my stance is that James Gunn saying, if he mentions DCEU canon, it becomes DCU canon. And if it doesn't get mentioned in the TV show or the film, it's not canon. It's not a big deal. It's not controversial. I don't know what some of you are angry about. But I do agree. The easiest way around this whole situation was to do a full, clean reboot. 